NASA's Cassini probe transmits mission data across a billion miles of space. When it passes 700 miles above Saturn's moon Enceladus, Project Investigator Michelle Dougherty can't believe what she sees. I look at the data, I see these large changes, and I think this is weird. I don't understand what's going on at all. What could it be telling us? I take a deep breath and I phone the Cassini project and I say, we think we're seeing an atmosphere at Enceladus. Enceladus is alive. Putting her reputation on the line, Dougherty persuades NASA to interrupt its mission, turn the probe around, and take an even closer look at Enceladus. What happens if we don't see anything? No one's ever going to believe anything I say again. Skimming Saturn's rings, Cassini takes a closer look at Enceladus. The images it sends back are astonishing. Enormous plumes of liquid water spew out of a moon that should be dead. The plumes that we're seeing at Enceladus are huge half the size of the moon itself. It validates the decision that we made to go close and really give us a new discovery that no one actually thought was ever going to be there. So it's really cool. The sensational discovery hits the world's headlines. But planetary scientists are baffled by the giant liquid plumes. It should be completely frozen but yet we have liquid water at 33 degrees Fahrenheit and warmer coming out of this thing, spewing into space. Something or someone is heating up a moon that should have frozen to death millions of years ago. We expect that the surface of Enceladus has a little bit of heat on it because of the solar radiation coming in, but you could power 20 coal power stations with the heat that we find, and that's a real surprise. What is powering Enceladus? One theory is that the mysterious energy emanates from Saturn's extreme gravitational force. Enceladus isn't like our moon. It has a rocky core, but it actually has a water ocean beneath a mantle of thick ice. As Enceladus orbits Saturn, Saturn's massive gravity squishes it and putting a lot of energy into that little tiny 300 mile diameter ball. And so that's helping to push that ice water out of these fissures at high velocity. Cassini flies through a plume spewing from the icy moon's geyser. What it discovers turns Enceladus from a barren, freezing wasteland into a promising place for extraterrestrial life. The interesting thing is, coming out with those geysers, we're also seeing hydrocarbons, building blocks of life. Enceladus is now my number one choice for where we might find life. If you find liquid water, you can start to talk about the possibilities for perhaps finding some kind of alien life beneath the, uh, the surface of Enceladus. I think if somebody had suggested that before the mission went there, they would have been carted off into a small room. The next step is directly search for life. We want to go back to the plume with more sophisticated instruments, and I think even grab a sample and bring it back to Earth. July 2013, Goddard Space Center, the headquarters of NASA's SOHO Solar Observatory. Its mission, to keep an eye on our fiery star. The SOHO project is an early warning system about new phenomena which could have an impact here on Earth. Scientists monitoring the satellite feeds see something extraordinary. A gigantic shadow creeping across the sun, a 500,000 mile wide hole. As NASA struggles to assess the threat, the dramatic images fuel a storm of speculation. This was weird. We don't know whether that was artificially induced on the sun. It's as if aliens had scooped the surface. Whatever the cause, the results could be catastrophic for us. So here we are on Earth living our normal lives, and there's a disaster movie going on on the sun.
In an effort to explain the hole, scientists turn to a satellite that captures pictures of super hot gases in the sun's atmosphere. Its high-tech cameras see things that humans can't, things visible only in the ultraviolet spectrum. Suddenly, the hole looks different. What appears to be an area of dark, empty space, in actual fact, it's filled with gases that are much colder than those that we can see in the area around us. The giant shadow is really a cold patch in the sun's atmosphere. When we're talking a cold patch, we're not talking Alaska. It's still a million degrees. Solar scientists call these cooler areas coronal holes. Coronal holes are places where material can escape and get out into the interplanetary medium. To the horror of scientists, this coronal hole could be in a perfect position to blast the Earth with solar particles. This giant coronal hole is spewing charged particles across space. And when the Earth happens to be in the way, you can get a solar storm. A solar storm can knock out satellites. Electronics won't function properly. And we have occasionally had that happen. That's real. It's not an imaginary concern. If we got hit, it's really a big deal. Traveling at one and a half million miles an hour, the deadly sunbeam will take 58 hours to reach the Earth. When it hits, the first sign should be a spectacular light show at the Aurora Borealis, as the planet's magnetosphere fights to protect us by absorbing the energy of the bombarding particles. July 20th, 2013, two and a half days after scientists first spotted the hole, the northern sky erupts with flashing colors. Could this be the opening act in a global meltdown? The awesome display lasts for two days, then dims. To the scientists' relief, the storm was nothing more than a beautiful light show. It dealt Earth a glancing blow. Next time, we might not be so lucky.